All right, Tanya. So today we're going to blow some people's minds. Yeah. Yes. We're going <laughs> to dig into people's psyches and kind of like discombobulate it and get them thinking about all kinds of stuff that they haven't been thinking about. Yes. All right. So, the, so, the, so the alpha, this concept of the alpha, right? Like I love that this is what you're working with. Cause I work with a lot of high performers, right? So I'm like, Oh girl, what you got, you know? And I think one of the biggest things that I've noticed in working with people who I would consider alphas is like their blind spots are real blind, right? Cause they don't like to take in that, like that feedback all the time. <laughs> and so what's your, what's your thought? What's your thought on that? What, what's been your experience and, and how did you, how'd you even get onto this first real quick? And then we'll go into discombobulation of mine. Yeah, this is, this is good. So, okay. So, you know, well, first I was born. No. Um, <laughs> so, um, I actually like all alphas, alphas are created in a very specific way. So I'll give you the, a quick little backstory on this. We have a very common origin story. We usually have a betrayal or an abandonment when we're a child, usually very young. Honest wow. to God, from my research, it's usually right around five years old. Wow. Um, alpha girls grow up as little adults. Um, they mm. tend to fight with their mom mm. and they tend to be seeking that love relationship with their dad that they did not have. Um, wow. This sets us up to constantly think that we have to earn our love. And because of that core abandonment wound, we don't trust. What we have learned mm -hmm. is we are on our own and we have to make sure all of our stuff works. And because of this, we develop this hyper awesome set of skills that makes Holy us amazing shit. for other people's <laughs> shit. So when their problems come, they want an alpha on it because we grab it with our teeth and we wrestle it to the ground and we are freaking invincible. We are crisis managers. We are analyzers. We are in our head. We are logical. We're thinking. We're usually beautiful and fit and powerful and sexy. And everything we are is like at the extremes. Alphas are either all on or all off, all in or all out. Uh -huh. um, and People judge us for this. And over time, what happens is, is we kind of harden our alpha character, even if we don't know that's what it's called. So if you're listening right now, you didn't know who you are. Hi, you're an alpha. Um, <laughs> this is who you are. You're a badass. You resonate to badass. And the problem with alphas is we're wired for struggle. Yeah. This is a really important nugget I'm giving you right now. We're wired for so struggle, true. which means that anytime you come to any situation, relationship, work, health, life, love, doesn't matter you are actually going to take the hardest path naturally because you're a warrior. Oh my warrior gosh. Listen, times of peace. So does that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling you. I am feeling this right now. <laughs> All of this. <laughs> we have such predictable. I mean, we don't like that word. No alpha would like it, but it's true. We have very predictable life cycles. So there's a life cycle of an alpha. The first, right around the first to about 20 something years old, that's your fight cycle. In the first part of your life, you are fighting anybody and everything. You're trying to find your way and establish yourself. Relationships with men are a fight. You don't understand this because you're smart and you're beautiful and you're loving and you're all in. And why can't these people just freaking behave? And you should have a good man, but you don't, you fight. And then a little bit later, later 20s, beginning 30s, you get tired of fighting and you enter the control cycle. Now, most alphas die in the control cycle. I'm trying to stop that. There's a third mm -hmm. cycle. It's called surrender, which already that word is like, ooh, surrender. Mm -hmm. Sounds sticky. Give me a minute. <laughs> the control cycle is where you get usually into a relationship with a beta male. This mm -hmm. is a man who is softer to you. So it feels like a relief. You're not fighting all the time. But when you have these marriages, the wheels come off the bus in about five to seven years because he gets tired of you pulling on him and you get tired of pulling him, trying to get him to be more aggressive and more assertive, basically trying to get him to be alpha. And you start to lose respect and he starts to become passive aggressive. And when that shit happens, all the sex goes out the window. Once the intimacy and the connection goes out the window, then you're seriously in trouble because any external stressor that hits that marriage will break it. So that is kind of where most alphas are. And in the meantime, wow. by the way, you're building a business, you're getting educated, you're expanding your spirituality, you're fixing your health, you're, you're sculpting your body, you're doing all this stuff to pour your energy into this, but the avenue of love, I, I call it the four square balance. It's your health, wealth, love, and your mission. Yeah. Usually we can rock health and we can rock wealth. Yeah. It's love and mission that we usually have an issue with. Hmm. 
Wow. Okay. So, so love. I'm like L L Ross connected us. I'm like L Ross. L didn't tell me you were a, like a mind reader or psychic. <laughs> I'm like, keep going. Tell me more about me, Tanya. <laughs> I know a lot of my listeners can relate. I'm like, okay. Okay. Did she give you backup information? Did she tell you my life story? What's going on? So let's talk about, let's talk about the surrender aspect. I don't know if you want to dive into this right now, or if you want to go through your uh, mind discombobulation first. <laughs> How do you like no, to do this? So, yeah, let's, I'm just giving cats out of the bag. So okay. anybody who's listening, pull over your car, lock a kid <laughs> in the bathroom, do what you need to do <laughs> because I'm going to change your life in the next hour. I'm going to talk really fast to do that because I've got to teach you oh, five life-changing things in like an hour. So we're going to lock in, strap on, we can do this. When I say the word surrender, alphas cringe inside. We think of the word surrender next door to the word submissive. And that is the word that makes me want to punch people in the face. <laughs> yes. If a man is talking anything about, I just want a woman who's submissive. Yep. Punch, punch urge. Yes. <laughs> submissive. She could just know her place. Oh my God. Like we, <laughs> right. I can't, the world thermonuclear device is 10 <laughs> alphas being told to be submissive in the same room and the room would just melt. So the word surrender oh is God. different because in, when you're surrendered, you are actually letting your alpha lead you. Now, this is critical because mm. your alpha can only lead you if you can trust. And remember, I told you in the beginning that alphas have a core issue with trust. Yeah. Since you don't trust yourself, you don't trust your family life of origin, you don't trust life. So wow. when you get into relationships, and this is critical, with God, you don't trust. Alphas tell God what to do. And whether you call God mm. source, Jesus Christ, consciousness, purple lotus, doesn't matter. We tell God what to do. We tell God, well, this is how I want it. And this is how it needs to show mm. up. And, and, and if it doesn't come out that way, then we roll up our sleeves and we go into push mode and we try to make it work. We try to mm. force it into place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as you know, law of attraction universe, you can't push anything. Anything you push against will just push back as hard as you're pushing. Yep. It's yep. Suck. Learned it. So, this is <laughs> our stuff. It. This is our, our jam. And, and I've from this process, I mean, I want you to know, um, Uber Alpha here, I did all this crap wrong. Like just <laughs> all of it. <laughs> yeah, I know you know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. <laughs> is that is that is that not the I used to tell my I tell my clients that you want to be the person who's not the I need to touch the hot stove person. Um, even though I admit I clearly touched, I mean, like I was ordering stoves, apparently. I was like, hello, Sears and Roebuck? No, I need the six burner. I need six <laughs> burners so I can touch all, all of, of them. them. <laughs> one burner a week, I'll take one day off. So uh, I, I've learned these lessons. I, you know, I've had a first marriage. That marriage failed. I did that thing. I did the alpha thing. I married the beta thing. Mm -hmm. I screwed it all up. I pushed, I pulled, we fought the passive aggressive thing. The wheels come off the bus. And my mission in life, what I'm lit up about is helping an alpha get into balance. Because if yeah. you can hear this, honey, if you're listening, if you're watching, you're out of balance. And that is the thing that is messing up everything. That's why you don't have the perfect square of life, health, wealth, love, and mission, because you're really strong in some and you're really weak in the other and your ego distracts you and says, well, just keep working on the stuff you're strong on mm -hmm. and then it'll come together on the other side and it doesn't work that way. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Phyllis, and just a, like little background information. I mean, you worked as a, a, a divorce attorney, right? Like you worked with divorce. Oh, you must have seen so many insights and relationships. I can't even <laughs> freaking imagine how many patterns you picked up on people from that, you know? So, um, yeah. What'd you uh, learn? And uh, actually, I don't, I don't want to distract you too much, but I know that you had to see I'm not so distractible. Much this is, this is my, <laughs> this is my core. I'm not distractible. Um, I was a high conflict divorce lawyer. I've been a divorce lawyer for 22 years. So, and, and I did the, the, if you're old enough, you remember a movie called the war of the roses, which was this older movie about this epic, epic battle of divorce. I did those divorces. I did, I had locked doors. I had guns. I had pepper gas strategically placed in my law firm. Those were the, I got at least two or three credible death threats oh a year. My gosh. Those were the divorces that I handled. And, and let me tell you, you know, Yes, I got the patterns. I could see what happens. There is nobody better suited to save a marriage than a person who understands why marriages come apart. Right. So people going to marriage coaches, they're like, I've been married happily for yeah, yeah. 
the one that, and now I'm going to tell all of you how you can do it. It's like, dude, you have one example. You're a freaking outlier. Okay. You're, you're a snowflake. Wow. <laughs> like, so true. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So wow. I love, wow. I love that I had that. That was really my, um, I consider your life, your curriculum. And that was what the universe gave me as a curriculum to help me learn all the things I needed to learn to get to this point in my right. life where I can put them all together yeah. and, and I can help high achievers that are trying to transform a stressful marriage. Yeah. I love it. I mean, that's when it like that mission thing you're talking about. That's when it's like nothing bad has ever happened in your life when you can look at it that way. Cause you're like, Oh, thank you for preparing me for this awesomeness. And I see that in you. I feel that truth of that coming from you right now. So it's so cool. Um, Speaking of truth, you're talking about this four lies and a truth. Can we get in? Can we, can we oh, dive yes. in? Let's can dive we, in four we, lies and a truth. Okay. We're going to play a game guys. We're going to play a game. <laughs> okay, everybody. So here's the trick. You have been taught four lies by life and I'm not, you didn't passively get them. You were taught them. They were, they were screwed into you. They used the power screwdriver. So it really got, it got a good grip. It got a good bit and I need to undo them. I'm going to show them to you. Any one of these lies, if you take it in and change your perspective on it today, we'll change your life. If you take all four, you blow the doors off. At the end of it, I'm gonna teach you a truth that's going to break everything open for you. So, so stay with me here. So we're gonna dive right in. The very first lie is, if you want money, go after it. If you want money, go after it. All of these lies, cause you to take your subconscious and create what I call a bad goal. The bad goal from that is chase money, chase right. the money. Right. What do people do when they're, when they're picking their undergraduate degree, they look, try to figure out which career has the money attached to it. And how do they get to the money faster? When you right. get, when you see new people, um, starting coaching, they're like, well, they're always focused on, I, I get the money and how do I get to the $10,000 a month? And how do I do right. that? Chasing money doesn't work. And I'm going to tell you right now why this is. When you're chasing money, the reason you want it is because you are completely observing the fact that you don't have any. Right. You're stuck on the fact that you don't have it. Right. You're staring at the lack going, crap, I need some money. Wow, I need some money. Really right. need some money. And then you get on your sales call and you can't freaking close the person because your energy is coming from a place of scarcity, totally. lack, totally. fear, neediness. They feel that. It's like, ew. <laughs> it's like, it's icky. It's icky. By the way, yeah. notice my love or, oh, they're just BFFs. So same thing in a relationship. You go in a relationship with that, it does the same thing. When you are chasing mm. something, yeah. it will flee from you. It will what? So it'll flee from you. It'll mm -hmm. run. It takes mm. the hell off. Just like mm -hmm. a man. You chase a man, he'll run. Stand yep. still, turn. <laughs> I was just talking to a friend about that last night. So true. <laughs> not chase. The universe is not designed for chasing. It's a, it's a right. universe of attraction. If you chase it, it won't run. It'll be like, why the hell is this one ah! It takes off. It's like a, it's like a um, Tom and Jerry where you remember the mouse runs by, and then the cat runs by, and then the dog runs by. Right. It keeps, it keeps running. Um, so people say, well, great, Tanya, that's all brilliant. I follow the logic. How do, how do I get the damn money? Because I still need the money. Right. Excellent. It is by byproduct. And let me explain that. There is an old saying that you've heard a thousand times and you kind of don't like it, but it's true. I'm going to tell you why. Do what you love and the money will follow. Mm. Do what you love and the money will follow. What they're telling you to do is they're telling you to pursue something out of love, not fear, not lack, not scarcity, out of love. Mm. And then the byproduct of doing that thing is the money. That's right. Mm. The byproduct, everything. I'm a foundations coach. So what I tell people is they need to have me first and then they can hire any other coach in the world and their ship will Love work. it. So if you can do your foundation right, you have to get in your foundation that if you're chasing something because you do not have it, you will continue to not have it. You do mm -hmm. not chase money. Chase the thing that generates money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like serving. So you see right. most people... Oh my goodness. You look at all of the big people. You look at the Oprah's and, and the Richard Branson's they're never chasing money. They're like, I wonder if I can get the first plane in space. They chase right. a dream. They chase fun. They chase passion. They chase all sorts of stuff, but not money. That's true. I'm beautiful. So that's your first slide. If you're, if you want money, go after it. The bad goal is you chase money. 
Now this one, this next one, I'm excited about this one because this is in your wheelhouse, girlfriend. Number two, everyone will love you when you're thin. Mm. Everybody will love you if, when you lose weight. If, yep. Oh, in fact, you'll yep. love you when you lose weight. <laughs> Bad goal number two, chase the weight loss. Mm. Just need to lose the weight and then I can love myself. And then he'll love me. And then that man will come back. And then my job will go and I'll get the promotion and I'll have the better sex and my cat will even like me. Mm -hmm. All lies. Oh, I can attest to that. Seen it over and over, lived it, seen it, coached it. All lies. It's never enough. You see it. You've (laughs) seen it. There is, it's not going to happen when you are in this place and and the world has taught you this. They've just, for, especially for women, they've hit us from all angles as we can never be too rich or too thin. Look at that. They put the money and the thin right next to each other. You can never be too rich or too thin. Chase them, chase them, chase them. That's right. If you chase weight loss, you don't love you. You're like, I don't love me as I am. So I need to be this other version of me. And as soon as I get to the other version of me, then I'll love me. That is rejecting yourself. Weight layers on energetically from rejection. Weight, W-E-I-G-H-T is W-A-I-T. If you have weight on you, you're waiting. So the weight isn't going anywhere. You can lose it and then it comes back. 97% of diets fail. There's a reason because the diet is this temporary thing where you're chasing weight loss. So bad goal, chase weight loss. Mm -hmm. So Tanya, what's, what's a good goal? And you actually know this one. The right goal is health. Yeah. Go after your health. Yeah. I always say, you know, you can love yourself fit, right? And actually that is how you will get fit. When you love yourself right now, the actions of caring for your body are a natural consequence. Right. Did you do it? See, you see how freaking smart you are. Check out the big <laughs> brain on you. Do you see, you see the byproduct? You see the indirect. I'm, I'm a coach of the indirect and the mm-hmm. indirect works because when we go after stuff directly, we screw it up. When right. you love yourself right now, you right. take good care of yourself exactly. naturally. And yes. when you take good care of yourself naturally, the weight comes off. Yep. Yep. You get what you want. Yep. That's, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. You're, you're nailing this. Okay. So we're, we're, oh, we're doing it here. Okay. So lie number three, and this one's one of my favorites because I was stuck in this one for a while. Lie number three that the world has taught you is that ultra successful people all have work-life balance. (laughs) What, what does this mean? They're, They're basically telling you, they're trying to sell you this fiction that Arianna Huffington, her husband is totally fulfilled. Her children are completely fulfilled. Her 19 right. companies are all running and making billions of dollars. And meanwhile, she's on a Stairmaster doing all of her workouts. Nothing ever suffers. Her dog is happy. Everything is in perfect balance. Right. That's a myth. There is no such thing as work-life balance. Please, if you imagine a balloon, I have like a three foot long pin. I just popped it. There is no such thing (laughs) as work-life balance. The bad goal you have is chasing that work-life balance. Let me please tell your people why there's no such thing as work-life balance. Yes, please. Work-life balance presupposes that balance is a static condition. Right. So, If you're not watching me, imagine in your head that I have my hands put together and I'm doing some fancy yoga pose that I cannot do on one foot. You look completely still when you're really good at this stuff, but you're not. What's going on is that 19,000 muscles are firing in your body constantly, constantly firing on the left, on the right, and top and bottom to keep you in the appearance of a static spot. Mm. That's balance. Balance is actually constant, minute adjustments, constant movement, actually balance, not frozen. Nothing in the world. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Is that not, is that not such a great analogy? Yeah. I love that. That's one of the best I've heard. Cause I always say, I'm like, there's no such thing as balance. Give me a break. Like what is, what does that look like? Like <laughs> that, that, that it can't happen. And I love that because what you're saying is instead of just we think, Oh, if I'm balanced, that means my life is just peace and bliss and like inaction. And I'm just kind of sitting around and like all my companies are running and yeah. And I just have time with my kids at the lake and that's it. You know, it's like, no dude. Cause you know, you have all these little micro muscles in your brain like making sure that's taken care of and that's taken care of and that's taken care of that right it's all it's it's like that yoga pose i love that analogy yes i'm gonna give you the blow off the doors analogy the one you want for you to relax yourself and take a big deep breath about balance is the image of a juggler 
Imagine a juggler. He's got the balls going. If I could juggle, I'm even learn to juggle because I had to teach this all the time. You got the balls going and you got all these different balls. You got the family ball, the health ball, the wealth ball, the mission ball, your spiritual growth ball. You got these five balls going in the air. When you're juggling at any single moment, you're actually only giving energy and attention to one ball. Love it. All the other balls are falling. Love it. But the juggler so isn't freaking out. The juggler's not like focusing. He's got the wealth ball going up and he's doing that, got the business going. And he's not like, ah, oh my goodness. I wasn't there to read my children seven hours of bedtime stories. You learn to be relaxed with the fact that you focus on the one, you put the one back into motion as the others fall. You catch the next one, you put it back into motion as right. the others fall. Love that it. Balance. That's work-life balance. Love it because it's, it's that analogy is also encouraging presence and focus and not stressing you're not stressing yourself out by thinking about all three other balls while you've got that one in front of you. You know, I said that how to be inefficient, how to suck at everything and be stressed out is be a quarter of the way into each thing that you're doing all the time. Beautiful. I love that. I love analogies. I love analogies. They're just such great teachers. I mean, that's why I like the Bible is full of them, right? Because it's such a great way to understand a principle. So good. All right. What's you know, it's funny about the Bible? It's such a good metaphysical handbook. Most yeah. people take things in there literally that are figurative right. and figurative that are literal, you know? So I, I tell people all the time, like, you know, there's a, there's a line in there. I read a line this morning and it's like, Put your attention on all things that are pure and true and of good report. They were telling you in the Bible, hey, you know what, right. dude? Um, you should think about the stuff that you want and that you like. Right. Totally. Dude, you get what you focus on. Like, it's, it's just written there. That was literal. Just if it's good, think about it. If it's not good, mm, not so much. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And I love parable. It's like, okay, well, who was like the most successful teacher? We're, we're, we're mindset coaches, right? So we love to be effective. We love to have an effective message, but like, who was the greatest teacher of all time? It's Jesus. Look how many people are like thinking and remembering about his teachings, his stories. So the using drop. effective analogies like that is like, dude, the master teacher, he has affected by far the most people with his teachings. Like we can learn from that. And so that's why I love like analogies analogies or parables, however you want to put it, because people love that. It is such an effective way for teaching because it sticks with you for life. Like I can remember Everybody. that juggling analogy for life. It's like, oh yeah, one ball at a time, one ball at a time, one ball at a time. And it helps you. So it's a wonderful way for teaching. I love it. All right. Parables are stories. We're wired. Humans are actually wired to yeah. learn by stories. That That's is true. why, um, you know, tidbit for the business people, effective sales methods are always stories mm. because we're, we're trained to listen. There's certain parts of stories that we're looking for. We're trained to listen. We're trained to expect the good thing at the end. We're, we're wired wow. to listen to stories. That's why when you teach in a parable, you teach in a story, you teach by analogy, it actually helps your brain, your brain images in certain ways. You know, there's three different yeah. kinds of brain, but, but I'm going to get, this yeah. is exciting. I'm going to get to my fourth lie now. Okay. Remember, we have had the lie about chasing money. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Chase the money. That's just a bad idea. It will not work. Even when you get it temporarily, you'll lose it. By the way, look at lottery winners. Okay. Yeah. Lottery winners can't ever hold on to their money. Like statistically, they all go bankrupt. They don't just go back to even they go lower. Like this is a thing. It's like they get that money. They're chasing that money. And then what happens? They can't hold on to it. It's not in their yep. consciousness. Yep. Chasing the weight loss. <laughs> you need to chase your health. You need to right. focus on your health. Right. You know, totally. Yeah. Hundred percent. Chasing work-life balance as a static spot, as a I get it and it's done. Mm -mm. Nope. Right. It's constant in progress. Yep. Finally, the fourth lie. And remember, we're talking about alphas, and I was saying that alphas have a lot of problems with their relationships. We have to because our core wound is abandonment and trust. So we tend to attract people who trigger that. That's actually how the law of attraction works. People don't realize it. It's either like to like, or it's something that triggers your wound. So you see it. The universe isn't being mean. They're just trying to get you to notice your stuff so mm. you can actually heal it. Yep. So what happens is, is alphas are surrounded by people who will trigger your trust and your abandonment stuff, which makes us very poor receivers, by the way. Not good at receiving help. We don't ask for help because we don't expect it to come. And then when people offer it, our answer is, oh, I got it. Mm. I got it. I'm doing it. I'm superwoman. My cape is on. It's flying. Oh yeah. The lie is, is that 
when you're in a relationship and it's struggling, when your marriage is in trouble and it's stressed out, the lie is that you should try to save the marriage. Mm. I'm going to say that Ooh. again, because you heard me correct. Mm-hmm. The bad goal is saving the marriage. Let me help you understand that a marriage is like a corporation. It actually kind of doesn't exist except for the fact that there's like two different people put together. The bad goal is saving the marriage because when you're trying to save the marriage, what you're really trying to do when you're telling the truth, sweetheart, is you're actually just trying to change him. You're like, if I could just change him, all of this crap would be working over here. Yep. Yep. The real goal is you. The surest way to save your marriage is to save you first. Absolutely. Every single time, no exceptions. There's no other way around it. Anything anybody else is teaching you is just flat wrong. Just like all these other lies they've taught you and these things sounded rational. Those weren't true. Saving the marriage, going after saving the marriage is like there's two people drowning. Have you ever heard of when there's two people drowning that one drowning person saved the other one? Nope. Like, Nope. Like I'm drowning and you're drowning. And I'm like, could you please stop drowning and come over here and save me? Cause I'm drowning and I was drowning first and I'm drowning because it was your fault. You see this? Oh you, my gosh. You, 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 you so get true. it. It's like, you cannot, you can't, when you actually take the stress off the relationship, literally by just stop demanding the other drowning person yes. save you. Yeah. A lot of times that turns everything around. Like totally. That. Totally. So, I mean, I bet you saw this like every time in your, in your experience as a, as a divorce attorney. That's smart. I wish, oh my God, I wish I could say that like, I knew this all along. I literally just figured this stuff out. Like, remember, hello, divorce myself. I messed it all up. Six burner stove, touched all of them. I look like Oh okay. girl. I mean, I feel you. I like, I kind of want to dig into this. I'm just being selfish right now <laughs> and just everybody air my- wants to dig into this. Yeah, I yeah. just like to air my shit on, on my podcast, but <laughs> I'm a pretty open book, but you know, I was married for 13 years. It got mm-hmm. to that point where I was like, I got to do what's right for me. I have to get out of the situation, wind myself up in a nice, super controlling relationship that was psychotic. And right after that, I get to finally get to say, Oh my gosh, I got to do what's right for me and get out of this situation. And totally like start. I'm like, Oh, beta guys, beta guys are safe. Beta guy. And then what is, what happens? I become the mindset coach. And I'm like, well, this isn't sexy. I don't want to be your life coach. Like this feel, this dynamic feels real wrong. Like I don't, I, I, Oh, I can't, I can't stop coaching you and I'm trying to stop, but I just keep doing it. <laughs> so this is so typical. That's the, <laughs> that's the pattern. Alphas have this pattern. They get their beta and then they have to fix and improve and repair and they have to upgrade him. They're trying right, to, and I was like, and I realized, Exactly, man. And all of it on all of those relationships, what I realized, and I've, and I've realized this in my friendships and everything too, is like, dude, just like, let people be who they are. They are showing you who they are and you choose you be who you are. You choose if you want to be in that relationship with them. But for me right now, like I'm kind of, I I'm telling you girl, I'm just like taking a step back from committed relationships right now. I'm like, I'm just going to observe. I'm just going to learn and absorb and date and observe patterns and relationships. So that's the phase that I'm in right now. So I'm very fascinated by this talk of, well, and of, I, I want to, I'm going to help you with that one. All right, let's do it. Check, check my time for me. How are we doing on time? I, yeah, I, we are 35 minutes in. Okay. Okay. Good. So I, um, so I can, I can play with your, I'm going to, yeah, yeah, you can just roll roll up my sleeves. (laughs) She's got gloves on. Like what's going on? Not watching. I have no sleeves. Um, (laughs) (laughs) for those of you in your car, I have no sleeves. That's why that was funny. Can I just say, you guys should watch this on YouTube because it's a good one to watch on YouTube. If you're not watching, you're going to want to see her. I'm like, I'm sitting here watching you, Tanya. I'm like, I got to connect her to every big podcast. I have a connection to. She (laughs) Awesome. <laughs> so fun this to is, watch. by the way, this is follow what you love, doing yeah. what you love. I love this. Yeah. This lights me Obviously. up. This lights me up. You are such a beautiful, dynamic, brilliant woman. You have come through so much. You have so much to offer. You are such a master in, in your square, the health 
corner of the square, the perfect square of life. And what I most want for you and, and your listeners that are, that, are, that are busy trying to master that health square is I want you guys to come into that balance. So you're in that place right now where you're like, okay, I'm going to step back and I'm going to observe. This is good because that means I don't have you in an active relationship right now because when I coach somebody when they're in the relationship, um, it, it can be stressful to them because it's mm-hmm. very hard to not look at somebody else's stuff. Because what I'm telling you is, is <laughs> yeah. you have to do your work yeah. regardless of the fact that he's not doing his. Right. Mm-hmm. Your work, he's not doing his. And here's the trick, just the secret. You're doing your work will trigger him to do his if he'll do it. Mm-hmm. But you cannot tell him. So this brings us, yeah. by the way, to the one truth. So it's perfect. See how the universe, God works this stuff out. This brings us to the one truth. And this is huge. So it's going to sound really simple. All great truths are really simple. Here it is. Four words. Demands never change behavior. Yep. Demands never change behavior. Love it. We had four lies. Here's the one truth that changes everything when you really get it in you. Demands don't change behavior. Now, here's what's funny. They don't even change your damn behavior. Mm -hmm. You can't demand yourself to just change your behavior. Hence, diets fail 97% of the time. A diet is a demand to change behavior. So true. So true. The reason it doesn't work is because anytime you have a belief that is in conflict the belief always wins. What you need to understand is that beliefs drive behavior. Absolutely. Demands don't drive it and beliefs can't be altered by a demand. So I'll give you a really easy example. Uh, my husband bites his nails. I find that annoying and icky and all sorts of <laughs> like, oh my God, like freaking little pieces of nail. I'm like, what? This is God, you're <laughs> killing me. I look like a platypus having like a moment. I'm like, ah. So of course, being an alpha, I'm like, dude, you know, hey, can we not bite the nails? It doesn't matter how I phrase this demand. This demand won't change his behavior. Sometimes right. he'll do it temporarily. Now, let me help you understand this, alphas that are listening, because you're an alpha. So you want to get in there, you want to push, you get in your relationship, and you make your demand. And most of the products on the market that coach for marriages are literally just 700 different ways to make a freaking demand. I <laughs> love it. Yeah. You need right. It. You need to use you, I instead of you and all the, right. just trying to tell you so how true. to make a, a demand, a fancy request. Right. But demands don't change behavior no matter how you dress them up. If their belief is not aligned with that demand, they're not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So my husband apparently believes that biting his nails is just no big deal. Probably not even any of my business. Right. And for me, like that wouldn't bother me at all. Like I don't, my daughter bites her nails and she gives herself, she like guilts herself about it. I'm like, who cares? Like to me, it looks like your nails are just like kind of manicured like all the time. Like I didn't even notice, you know? So it's, it's really good at it, by the way. He's gotten so good at it that it looks like somebody like manicures. I'm like, hey. He's a Pretty skilled, cool. like, you know, his skill is good. He's got like it's a not, special skill now. <laughs> he's got like, a, like that left tooth is just really getting it perfect. I don't even understand. Does it taste good? Right. So what's it's different? You know what? what I, my, in my, in my brain, I thought you should like find some sort of information about how many like parasites are underneath nail beds. So you can change his belief about, <laughs> change his belief. That'll change his behavior. But I think what you're getting at is your belief, your belief needs to change. My it, belief yes? is that it's gross and icky and right. his belief is that it's not. My demand won't change his right. belief. When you really get that, what you start observing is you start observing how often you're running around making demands of people yeah. to change their behavior, totally. knowing it's not going to happen. And then you go into leverage, you go into despair, you go into doubt, judgment, judgment. pressure, yep. manipulation, you yep. know, oh my God, it's like, ah, oh. mm-hmm. it is at a belief level. When somebody believes something, and this is ties back to what you said earlier it naturally impels their action. When you want to be healthy and your focus is healthy and your belief is I deserve and want to be healthy, it naturally makes you eat better. It naturally says, maybe not a third donut. Right. Maybe not. Right. Maybe, right. maybe a walk, <laughs> maybe, right. maybe a little bit of, maybe, maybe lift a weight, you know, maybe, maybe get online and watch, watch, you know, 
Coach Garrison stuff because I need to learn and she can teach me. You see, that would be natural. It feels right. good and it flows naturally because right. you've aligned your beliefs. If you don't get your beliefs in alignment first, you will always be sissy fish pushing that rock up the hill and it just rolls right back. Yeah. I'd say, you know, for me, just going into relationship stuff for me personally right now, like I feel like I had to fight a lot of shoulds to be where I'm at right now. So it was like, you should want to be in a relationship. You should get remarried, Tara. You should have a boyfriend. And I was like, finally, I just cut the BS. And I was like, I don't want that right now. That doesn't mean I'm not ever going to want that, but it's not an alignment. Like when I tap into higher power, when I tap into my higher self, it, nothing in me is saying, focus on that right now, push your energy that way, nothing. So I just finally just said, I'm just doing what feels right for me right now. And so, you know, let what's me, great? let me tell you why you're right. I'll tell you why you're right and why that's so. You are right because what's going on is, and I'm a big believer. I'm gonna throw in an extra little bonus nugget for people. Three words, very important, very important. Struggle is suspicious. Mm. Struggle is suspicious. Anything that has struggle on it is suspicious. Love now, it. here's the trick. Mm. I taught you about alphas. What do we love? We love some struggle. Oh, oh yeah. we love struggle because we always succeed. We triumph. We go <laughs> up both ways in the snow. We <laughs> love struggle. But the problem is struggle is suspicious. Anything God has ever wanted done is done. It gets mm. done. It doesn't have resistance attached to it. Mm. Your mission doesn't have resistance. Your health won't have resistance. Mm. The things you're supposed to do don't have resistance. If there's resistance, hello, it's you. Mm. Right now, wow. the universe is keeping you safe because if you try to go do this relationship thing, it would be a struggle. Right. And you yep. don't want the struggle and you right. don't need the struggle and your life works better without the struggle and you're a master teacher and you have all these things to do. So when you don't have that struggle, your life works better. So yep. that's the universe going, oh, I know where she is right now. Yeah. I, she doesn't need to have that desire because she hasn't met Tanya yet who can <laughs> help her take the struggle out of that crap. I'm going to help you take the struggle out of that crap. And then what's going to happen is naturally, naturally, as your beliefs change, right? then you'll actually want it. But right now you have a deep core belief that's like, that is some BS. That is difficult. That is some struggle. I have other things to do. I need my life to work. I need my children happy. I need my yep. business working. God has given me permission to protect these people. I'm staying on point. You got it. What's wrong with it? Yep. You so got it. That's, that's why that is. And like I said, once you have that belief that, oh my gosh, actually it's, it's, this isn't a struggle, but I'd actually have to help you with that belief. Mm, so anybody who's just telling it. you to change your behavior without yeah. helping you change the belief, right. It's screwing you. Anybody. So true. With all areas, with your fitness too, like all of that, it's the same principle for all, for all of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest work. That's why you can't, in my opinion, like just buying a, you know, a training plan or something and like thinking that's, it's like, dude, no, like it's the core beliefs you've got around it. Like you think, and that's, that's what I see in fitness. What you're saying right there, struggle is suspicious. That's what I see is like, how can I make this harder and harder and harder and harder? And I'm like, no, how can you make it more joyous and rewarding and you love it and you can't wait to do it again tomorrow. And it's, it's like, just, you know, I like, I literally go to bed and I can't wait to go to the gym. I'm like, Ooh, as soon as I fall asleep, it's sooner. I get to go back. It's so fun for me. And like, when you can get to that place, you think you're going to be successful? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love this struggle. This is you're so beautiful. <laughs> Not just your face. Like, it's actually kind of funny. I've said this about L too. Um, you guys are so startlingly beautiful. And by the way, your podcast is awesome. Likewise. You Thank you. So startlingly beautiful that sometimes people cannot notice that your inside is actually better than your outside. Like uh, it's crazy. Like you're, you're better people inside than you are outside. I can put a big sack over you and introduce you to people. <laughs> and they will be like, whoever this girl is under the sack, she's amazing. And then I take the sack off and they're like, Oh my God, it's fitness Barbie. You brought fitness Barbie to meet me. Yay. And I'm like, look at this. I'm like, yes. Oh my God. Girl, you got to move back from the other side of the world so you can <laughs> hang out with us. You are so funny. Thank you Some so much. Some part of the world would gravitationally shift. If you, me, and Elle were like within <laughs> like, like a couple of feet of each other, like they, NASA would be like, I don't know what's going on, but the, the Earth's magnetic core is shifting. Something's liquefying. Maybe it's the Russians. Ah. <laughs> <you know? laughs> 
And they'd be like, oh, oh no, it's God. actually three alphas being happy at the same time. They're <laughs> force of seriously, seriously. God, I love it so much. Um, we didn't do the truth yet, did we? We did. That's the truth. The truth What's is the truth? humans never change behavior. Ah, that was the truth. Behavior, okay. They do not do it. That is what I call the law of behavior. Mm. My other laws are called the law of indirect action. When you're trying to get a goal, you actually want to look at the goal and figure out what it is that produces it. So if you need money, figure out what produces money. Focus on that. If you want to lose weight, figure out what will naturally cause you to lose weight. What you're talking about is what belief do you need to install that will mm -hmm. cause you to naturally do that without all of the struggle because struggle is suspicious. Mm -hmm. And I love what you're doing. I love that you left behind like being a practicing attorney to help people with coaching their mindsets. So instead of like resolving the trauma, you're like, Hey, maybe we can actually prevent some of this trauma by helping people get their minds right. And it's so clear and so obvious that you are living in alignment. It's ridiculous. It's like, Oh my gosh, like all of this could have not happened if you hadn't followed your heart and had the courage to just listen to what the universe was telling you to do. All these people could have missed out on this. Like it is so clear you're in alignment with it. And what I want to say, what I was thinking about with you too, and I've been talking to my clients about this too lately. I'm like, dude, just listening to this podcast right now, or listening to a really good book or um, even being on like a group call and theoretically like hearing this in your mind and be like, yeah, that's cool. It helps a little, right? It'll shift your mindset a little bit and get you thinking about stuff. And you're like, Hmm, that's interesting, but is not enough. You need coaching. Like I have two mindset coaches right now. Okay. Like you, cause you got to get it. Flip three now. I'm, I'm now three. <laughs> yeah, this is true. We're going to see what happens. Let's see what happens. We'll do like another podcast in like a year or two years or however long it takes me to like open up to being in a relationship again. Right now I'm like, nope. <laughs> you will change by the way, people listening, you change at the speed of belief. Mm. This is why people totally. refer to epiphanies. I love the word epiphany and, and learning by revelation. Um, that basically is a belief that shifts. When a belief suddenly shifts, we refer to it as an epiphany or a revelation and you change instantly in that moment. Yeah. All of your energy aligns True. differently. The second that your belief shifts, everything around you starts working differently. So you true. external by changing your internal. The knob for the external is not outside where alphas want to grab it and control it. It's yep. inside it's so true. I've experienced that and doing like the work of Byron Katie with one of my coaches. It's just like, as soon as it clicks, as soon as you're like, oh my gosh, I see it. I see it. Wait. It's like, it's like it was a door that was closed and you opened it up and now you just like fully see. That's what it feels like. And when you fully see, you're like, okay, like, oh, I can come explore here now. Like I see it. it's not locked. I'm not locked out. It's just like that. I love that so much. Um, how do how do people, like, what do they do? How do they work with you? How do they partake of you? How do they learn from you? What, what do you offer? Well, I like partake of me. I want to be partaken of. Yes. How do they partake <laughs> of Tanya? <laughs> how do they get okay. any access to you? You can find me on any social at the Art of Self Rescue. So you can email me at mm -hmm. Art of Self Rescue Gmail. You can find me on Facebook, on Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm Art of Self Rescue everywhere there is. And the way so I work with people... Sorry, at Art of Self Rescue? So at Art of Self Rescue, okay. hashtag okay. Art of Self Rescue. If you type it in, I'm cool. going to come up. Just look for me. Um, nice. My YouTube channel will be coming out, and it's Art of Self Rescue. Yay! Nice. I want, this is my mission. Like, remember I said health, wealth, yeah. uh, love, and mission. This is my mission. So Obviously. My mission is literally to get this message out to as many people, as many alphas as I can. I want to reach hundreds of thousands of women because I understand by my own personal observation that I think about 80% of marriages are struggling. I think yeah. I really am big on the 80, 20 principle. I think about 80% of marriages are struggling. you got, you got lack of intimacy, sexlessness, yeah. stress, arguments, everyone, no one talks about it. It's like I the know. biggest taboo. You can talk about anything in the world right now. You can talk about gender and, and sex and politics totally. and freaky things and yep. with, you know, unicorns and candy canes. It doesn't matter, so but true. nobody says, God, my marriage is struggling. You know, my husband hasn't touched me in four years. Nobody can say that. I don't know I why. Know. I want to take that out of the closet so people can start to feel better. Really? I have so much information that I give away for free. Free. F-R-E-E. <laughs> F 
and an R with <laughs> two E's free because I don't want anybody to have the excuse, oh, I don't have the money. Free. I want to help you. And then I have Amazing. group coaching and then I have private. But I'm telling people, mm, for less cool. than you can start a divorce, you can coach with me privately. So Love please it. understand that there's a divorce in the US every 36 seconds. And the average divorce retainer is $2,500 to $7,500. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it's going to cost. I've done the math. It costs around $117,000 for a divorce in, in a small family. That's all in adding up all the stuff that you don't see. The counseling and the coaching and the, the divorce, the, the, the moving the cars and splitting the health insurance. And, and now you've got babysitters for kids and, and all. Mm, it costs a fortune. It does. I, I mean, I've, I've been through it. And I would say if you're listening to this and you're like, no, I'm good. Like my marriage is good. Like I'm like bullshit. Cause listen, like I was married for 13 years and like up to year 10, I would have been like, I'm fine. We're good. Like we're really good communicators and we're really great at everything and everything's fine. And then three years later we're divorced. Right. And so I would say like, dude, like get in on it, <laughs> get on a make it. Why don't, instead of just being like, it's fine, make it awesome. Because I'm being real part of the reason I don't want to get married again. And <laughs> I've never said this on air, but I'm like, none of y'all are making me want to get married. No, you, it all, it looks awful. Like none of you look happy. Everybody looks like they're like suffering and they're just dealing with it. And they're like, their personalities are like toned down 10 notches. And they're like, you know, it's hard, but it's, it's a lot of work. That's what I hear. It's a lot of work, but and I'm like, that sounds great, dude. Like, I don't say that about my job. I don't say that about my career, my passion. I'm not like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's good. Like, no, I don't say that. I'm like, I fucking love it. Sorry in language, but <laughs> I'm like, I'm it. This is, you're saying it. You're saying yeah. exactly what I need people to, to come out and say, what marriage doesn't look good. It doesn't look attractive. Why do you think it's so hard to get a man to want to marry you? Because the men talk amongst each other and they're like, I got married and shit went to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. That's pretty much what happened. So <laughs> right. I want to fix it. And I, right. I, if you're, if you're in the relationship right now, you want to go to fearlessfocuscoaching.com forward slash Tara, T-A-R-A, mm, right fearlessfocuscoaching.com forward slash Tara, T-A-R-A. And there you're going to find the one thing nobody will tell you. I have, um, I've really condensed the information into an ebook for you and just sit and read it. If you can read that, it'll take you 20 minutes. And if it doesn't change your life and make you want to fly to Australia, come to my door, knock on it and hug me, then I'll give you your free money back. <laughs> I love you. If you have not, like, if you're like, I don't want more Tanya after this episode, you are crazy. This has like been the funnest episode to record. I'm like, we got to do this again. I'm like, my mind's like going all sorts of places. So fun. Tanya, oh. thank you so much. Thank you for following your passion. Thank you for being funny. Thank you for owning who you are and just like letting it all rip. It's so refreshing. It's so, so fun. Like I can see that you are like fully embodied, like you are fully yourself and just offering all your talents to the world. So thank you for coming on Inside Out Health and sharing that with us today. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for having me. And honestly, just bless you for helping people with their health mission. Thank you, Tanya.